Hey everyone, Mr. Sujano here, your source for gaming, tech, emulation, and open source news, and sometimes reviews. In this video, we're taking a look at this very interesting mini PC from Mini's Forum. This is the AIX1 and features an AMD Ryzen 7 255. All right, to kick things off, Mini's Forum sent me this AIX1 mini PC for a fair and honest review. And it is worth noting here, I'm allowed to say whatever I want on this device. There are no restrictions. Now taking a look at the high level specs and the CPU in this PC is one of the reasons I wanted to check it out. You don't hear about it very often and that's the AMD Ryzen 7 255. It features an AMD Radeon 780M GPU, 32 gigs of RAM, and the storage on this is one terabyte. What I also find interesting about this mini PC is that it does include a mic and speakers built in and it does have a port for an Oculink. So taking a look inside the box and the very first thing we see here is the mini PC. And I'm noticing all of the packaging here, or at least most of it is uh, recyclable. Underneath the mini PC is an HDMI cable. The included power adapter does use a barrel jack and taking a look at the specs of the power adapter here and it's 19 volts and 6.32 amps. They also include a bracket, for example, if you wanted to mount this to a wall. And this one is pretty easy to miss, but if you've got some additional storage that you wanted to include and attach, you can. And here's a much better look at the Mini's Forum Mini PC, the AIX1. Now taking a look, it is a silver metallic color and not a fingerprint magnet. On the front here, we've got two USB ports as well as one USB-C port and also a headphone jack. On the side of this device, no surprise here, it's like this with many, many PCs. There's a whole lot of venting. On the other side of this device is the exact same thing, a whole lot of venting and also a port if you wanted to lock this to a desk or something. And the bottom of this device, no surprise here, there's not a whole lot, just more venting. And here's a better look at the back panel. So at the top of the back panel, we've got even more venting. Uh, you can see the barrel jack for power, you can see the LAN port. You can see the port for the display port, the Oculink, HDMI, one USB-C on the back and one USB type A. I'm a little bit disappointed to see a lack of USB ports on this device. And there's a better look at the Oculink port. Now as for sizing of this mini PC, you can get the dimensions right on the website here, but it's not the smallest mini PC that I've ever reviewed. It's also not the biggest. Uh, here it is beside the Geekcom IT12. Opening this one up is pretty simple. There's four different screws, but I will say taking the base plate off is a little bit interesting. I'm not going to lie here. When I was opening this up, I thought I was breaking it. It is crammed in there pretty good, and you have to be careful prying it off or you might snap something. Uh, but taking a look as well, you can see the top is still attached to the bottom, so it's not something you can easily remove and just set aside. There are some cables that are attached, and if you forcibly remove it, uh, you could completely rip it off. And you can see the fan on this is on the base. And here's a better look at the inside of this. So you can see here the RAM and the storage is pretty easily accessible and very quick to change out if you needed to. And they also went with name brand stuff. They didn't go with no name RAM here. We can see it's crucial RAM. And the storage on this is Kingston. While arguably it's not the most expensive RAM and storage on the market, at the same time here I'm glad they went with the name brand and not just some no-name knockoff stuff that may or may not be reliable. Now in terms of testing, I've had this device for around a month and I've been very thorough when it comes to overall testing. I've utilized it for video recording and editing. I've utilized it for gaming. I've utilized it for a whole lot. And this thing has excelled for pretty much everything I've thrown at it. Now it is worth noting here, although it's integrated graphics at the same time here, it's powered by AMD. And because of which you do have access to AMD software, which I think is incredibly helpful. Now testing out PUBG here, for example, I had no problem getting above 100 frames per second. Normally it was sitting between 90 and 110. And surprisingly here, even after a very long playing session, it was still not thermal throttling. I was still getting around 90 to 110 frames per second. Now for those wondering, I was running the game at 1080p graphics and here are the graphical settings. They're not cranked up very high at all. In fact, they're very low, but not cranked as low as they can go. I mean, no joke, although this is not necessarily a gaming powerhouse, I'd say it's very capable. I mean, in my testing, it beat the pants off the Intel Core Ultra 9 285H. 
Here is Fatal Fury City of the Wolves up and running. And you can see this game is also up and running very good. In terms of frame rates here, we're at a constant 60 frames per second. Now again, the graphics are not cranked up here and the GPU is running between 86 and 95% and the CPU and temperature here is sitting around 62 degrees Celsius. You can see the resolution on this one is set to 1080p and well, the graphic preset is set to low. Again, not a gaming powerhouse, but capable and here is street fighter 6 up and running and the game is running smoothly i'm not getting any graphical stuttering everything is looking relatively okay again not using the highest presets out there but the game is able to run on this chipset and taking a look at the frame rate again it's a stable 60 frames per second the GPU on this one is sitting a little lower, less than 70% utilized. And here is a very interesting game up and running, and this is using the CMU emulator, and the game is called Breathing in the Wilderness. And, uh, well, it's running at a stable 60 frames per second. Now, as for temperatures on this device, I would say I normally saw between 60 and 70 degrees Celsius, give or take. The fan is very effective at cooling this. And this was after a couple hours of gameplay with that GPU around 100% utilized. Now, in my opinion, one of the more interesting aspects to this mini PC was the CPU. I wasn't really aware of an AMD Ryzen 7 H255. After some research, I found a page here, but you do have to translate it from Chinese to English. And based on the specs, it seems very similar to an 8745H. So let's get into what I liked, what I didn't like, and whether or not I'd recommend the Minis Forum AI X1 255. So taking a look here at what I liked, and there was a lot to what I liked. I like that this case is not a fingerprint magnet. It is metal here, except for the base of it is plastic. Uh, and the back panel is also plastic. I do like the fact that this was very easy to set up and get going. I mean, it comes preloaded with Windows on it. You could put Linux on it if you wanted to. And it is very easy to upgrade parts if you wanted. However, that being said, though, in terms of upgrading, it's really just RAM and storage. I wouldn't recommend trying to upgrade the CPU in something like this. That part would not be easy. So upgrading RAM and storage on this, I'll say, is very easy. On top of that, the ports are easily accessible. I like that the power button is in a good place here, not on the top where you'd accidentally hit it. And on the back of this thing, I do like the fact that it does have a display port and HDMI, as well as an Oculink port. I'm glad that it comes with 32 gigs of RAM. I like the one terabyte of storage on this one, and the fans on this I really liked. They ran very quietly. They were not obstructive. They were not very loud and annoying. This thing was a very quiet mini PC. Could you hear the fans sometimes? Absolutely yes, uh, but it wasn't obnoxiously loud, not like my laptop. Gaming performance on this one I found to be very acceptable. It's not gonna be a performance beast. It doesn't have a dedicated graphics card, but at the same time here, it was very good for an integrated GPU. And temperatures I found also to be very acceptable. It didn't really go above 70 degrees Celsius. Now moving on to my dislikes about this device, and I do have a few of them. First and foremost here, if you've got a number of USB devices, you're probably going to need a USB hub. There are five ports overall for USB and USB-C, two USB-Cs and three USB-As. And I would say that's a little bit underwhelming. I wouldn't have minded seeing at least one or two more ports on this thing. Uh, the second thing I'm not the biggest fan of is the fact that this does use a barrel jack for an adapter on it. I kind of wish that it did have USB-C for power delivery. And the last thing I didn't like about this device, and I guess this is a, uh, well, it depends on your preference here, but I wasn't a big fan. It was very difficult to find information about the Ryzen 7 255. Uh, in terms of overall support and longevity, I, I really don't know what this entails, but at the same time here, it's a very unique chip. That may be very interesting to a number of people. Now, before we get into whether or not I'd recommend this device, let's take a look at the pricing. So as tested, this is priced at $639.90 US dollars, basically $640 US dollars. Although there is a promo code to save 20% off that. So that 20% off takes the price to just over 500 bucks. And taking a look at the Minis Forum website, they have the exact same thing listed for $503 overall, which is pretty similar to the Amazon pricing. And it's also worth noting here, the bare bones version of this is just over 350 bucks. So that's without the RAM and the storage if you've got your own. So the big question here at uh, 640 bucks or the 20% off price around 510 bucks, give or take, 
would I recommend the Minis for them X1255? And I would say yes and no. No, if you're looking for AAA gaming at great graphics and trying to do a whole lot with it. At this price point, you're probably not going to find that. Uh, but I would say that this is meant for light gaming and gaming at 1080p at around low-ish graphics settings. I would also put this into the questionable category in terms of long-term CPU support, considering the 255 is a... Uh, it's not a common CPU and it's very hard to find information on that exact CPU. However, in terms of just general use, like content creation and using this at home and for some light AAA gaming in terms of like 1080p and low graphics settings, this was absolutely fine. I mean, it went toe to toe versus my laptop, which is running an Intel 12700 chip and a GPU, which is an NVIDIA 3060. I mean, this thing went toe to toe with that, and I am not joking with you. And in terms of loudness of fans, this thing blew the laptop out of the water. This was a very quiet device. So at this price point of 503 bucks, um, I was very impressed with this. It outperformed my Geekcom IT15 with an Intel i9-285H. This thing was far better in terms of gaming, and it just it ran cooler and quieter. I was a big fan of this chip overall. I'm hoping it's going to be supported for a longer period of time. I really don't know about this chip, and I think that's the biggest question I have. But anyways, that is all I've got for you in this one. Straight to the point, all stuff and no fluff. Shoutouts to Minis Forum for providing the AI X1255 for a fair and honest review. Let me know what you think about the AI X1255 in the comments below. If you like this video, leave a like. If you didn't like this video, leave a like. Hit that subscribe button. Check out my other videos. Don't tempt fate. Save your state.